In this month, it really got used to me. Hey, what's up, Reefers? I knew putting up the Christmas tree early is a fantastic idea. Look at this. Zet Light sent me the Q Maven 2 to test out. So, come take a look. Unboxing of the Zet Light Q Maven 2. What? Cole, what did I do? Thanks, Moki. What the? <gasps> hey, come back. Later. What's going on guys? Let's unbox the lights that I stole from Inappropriate Reefer. So I just realized I can't do an unboxing because the lights are already over the tank. But I'll show you guys something a lot better. Here is a glass of water. Yes, these lights are completely waterproof. How cool is that? You never have to worry about these lights getting wet whatsoever. You can even take a shower with them if you wanted to. <laughs> now that I've shown you that, let's give you a quick rundown of these lights. Number one, the aesthetics. Aesthetically, these lights are beautiful. The first thing that catches your eyes is actually the slim profile of these lights. And then it's the acrylics on each side which really adds to the look of the lights. Within these acrylics, there's actually blue LEDs on each side that adds a little blue hue to it, which is really nice as well. And the unit itself seems to be a coated aluminum frame. Here is the underside of the light. So there's a total of 56 LEDs down here. And within each LED, as you guys can see, there's a rounded lens cover that helps to spread the light. Number two, quality. The quality for the Q-Maven 2 has actually really blown me away. Uh, there's a nice weight to it. The light doesn't feel cheap, it's hefty. Uh, I'm not sure if there's a fan in this unit, but it is so quiet. And what really surprises me is there's no heat to the unit itself. The lighting is phenomenal, which leads into number three, color and par. The color and par that these lights put out is absolutely phenomenal. I love these lights. Look at how well it blends each of the channels together. There's blues, there's royal blues, there's whites, reds, and greens. And just look how nice everything looks in your tank while you film, take pictures. like. For those of you who do a lot of photography or try to take pictures of your tanks, that's usually the struggles, but with these lights, like I have no issues. Like look how clean that looks. And as far as par goes, I did do a par measurement. So the lights are about 15 inches away from my water surface. And I'm only using about like 50% of the intensity. And I get about 250 par in the mid section of the tank. Um, I did try bumping it up all channels to 100% and I was able to achieve like about 500 par, so plenty of par from these lights. Which leads into number four, controllability. So to control these lights, it's through an app called Horizon Aqua. You download it through App Store, really easy to set up. There's other accessories on here. For us, we're using the LED lights. Go into the QMaven 2 setting. And within that, you'll see five different settings up top. So you have your sunrise, morning, noon, and so forth. There's five of them. And within each of those set points, you can adjust each of the uh, channels. So you have your white LEDs, royal blue, blues, red, greens, blue, violets, and UV. You pretty much just slide the intensity slider bar, hit save, and that's it. And lastly, the cost. The cost of these lights are $360, which puts you between AI Primes and Radeons. How does it stack up to higher end lighting? It is very, very comparable, guys. Like, I am absolutely blown away with the quality, the aesthetics, um, everything about these lights I love. It is actually my favorite LED lights currently in the market. Would I recommend it? Absolutely. So, good job, Zed Light. That's all I have for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed it. Peace, love, Mighty Nana Tank out. Hey, what's up, Reefers? Every single time right before a big trip, I like to do a status check on the 45 gallon tank just so I can see what has changed after the trip. So 
here it is. Here's a 45 gallon tank. Most of the things are doing well, but I just want to address a couple things. First things first, uh, sadly, we're gonna say goodbye to the Gold War Hammer that that been with me for about two, two and a half years. Unfortunately, with the one-two punch this tank experienced a couple months ago, it was a combination of temperature change and an elk swing. It was a little bit too much for this uh, hammer to recover. So I'm pretty much ready to pull it. Well, it's, I should put it a long time ago, actually. But pretty much ready to pull it and say goodbye. And looking back there, I did not actually notice what was happening until pretty recently. See all the Xenia in the back, right next to the gold hammer? Somehow the Xenia got onto that rock and took over, which I do not mind because I do like Xenia. But speaking of Xenia, for a while my Xenia has been pulsing really nicely, but recently it stopped pulsing. So I'm trying to figure out why as well. Maybe it's the lack of magnesium initially, but then I started dosing some magnesium to make sure it is back at the uh, good range. It was a little low before, but that did not seem to help. And I've been feeding phytoplankton pretty heavily, made no changes, so it may be something else. I feel like it may be iodine, I don't know. But uh, with iodine, I'm really careful if I were to dose it. So I'm kind of just holding steady to see uh, if it stops pulsing one day again. I don't know, it's a mystery. Now, I want to do a quick update on the file fish because they have been adjusting to this tank really well. Um, when I was talking about the file fish back then, they always hide. Like whenever I'm in front of a tank, they'll kind of like go around and hide behind the frog spawn. But I guess in, in this month, it really got used to me. And whenever I'm in front of the tank, it'll actually come up to me first to make sure um, whether I'm feeding food or not. If not, they'll just maybe like swim away and do other things. But uh, they always come up to the front. So I think they're adjusting to the tank life really well. Just look at this guy and that guy right there. And they compete with the clownfish and the bicolor blenny for food readily. I, I was pretty impressed by how aggressive and how quick they could be when properly motivated. The Yasha Gobi has also gotten bolder and bolder. Whenever I feed the food, I'll feed it in front of the tank and they always dash out and swim in front of the tank and compete with the other fish as well, which is great. And uh, when hiding, I was gonna show you because like the uh, bottom fin has really taken on that black spot. Let me see if it comes out. Uh, so the black spot is an indicator that this is a male. Before, just like a tiny hint of black, but now it has become really apparent and I don't think it's coming out. But also look at this bicolor blenny. This guy is a character. I have a love-hate relationship with him, but look at look at the tail. See how it developed that little, I don't wanna say, it's not a streamer, but like the top and bottom edge of the tail has like this uh, longer black part and it's really starting to look nice. Um, so far, besides the occasional nip on the Monty cap, like here and over there a little bit, is uh, pretty much a model citizen. So I think we are, uh, having a little truth, a truth. So since I'm not actively trying to get him out of the tank and has been with me for so long, I'm actually trying to find a name for this guy. This guy is a little character. He always kind of perch and look at me now. So I'm growing to like him. <laughs> and the rose bubble to an enemy has continued to grow. Look at this. Here, let me back up a little bit so you can see the size in, in reference to the tank. So I'm kind of torn. Like, do I want a large anemone or do I want a couple smaller ones? Um, I think my preference may be a couple smaller ones that can conform better towards rock work. So it's not just like a blub, like a big piece right there, but um, more like small chunks along the rock work. But uh, it's not splitting, so it is what it is. But uh, maybe, it's, maybe it's a good thing too, because sometimes splitting means uh, something is stressing it out in the tank. Uh, so maybe, maybe, it's a, maybe it's a good thing, I don't know. And of course, I still need to talk about the light in the back. This guy right here, this is the current USA light. This is kind of like the prototype. Uh, I think the line is called Serene, at least the freshwater version is. Um, but this is the marine version they sent me out to kind of try it out first. Oh, there's a Yashagobi. Look at the fin. You see there's a black spot at the pelvic fin where it's touching the ground. So the black spot is the ind indicator that this guy is a dude. Uh, I've been trying to find a female, so I'm still keeping an eye out. Now also take a look at this clam. This is the $50 Peco clam, and this is one of the best purchases I've ever done. Uh, look at the growth on this clam. Yeah, I've had this guy for half a year. It was from Reefapalooza in New Jersey back in June. So it's been, it been with me for about half a year, and it's grown quite a bit. And this, this guy is a joy to watch. 
And whatever I'm doing this time seems to be working. I've tried Teresa clamps before in the past. I think I tried two, three. They all lasted like three months, four months, and they all just perished. But this guy has been hung on, and the metal, the metal extension looks really good, and the color is really intensified. So I think there's more symbiotic algae in the metal, and I think it's, it's happy. And I believe it's a combination of uh, good light and uh, dosing, reef, nutrition, phytoplankton. I think they're really taking advantage to it. I understand that clam, this size, or just in general, they probably do not need uh, phytoplankton to really survive, at least according to some people. Um, but I don't think it, I don't think it hurts, you know. And so I've been dosing pretty, <laughs> pretty. Um, how should I say this? I've just been dosing a bunch. Same thing with this little guy right here. I got this guy from Pacific East. And this little guy is unique because it's actually a hybrid. At least uh, we believe it's a hybrid. It's a hybrid between Teresa's and Squamosa's. If you look at the spots on the on the mantles. But you also look at the, this is called Schrut. Schrut? Oh, man, I, I can't pronounce that on the shell. So it's not perfectly smooth, but it's not so shrooty. <laughs> like a Squamosa as well. So that's why uh, we believe that this is a hybrid, but we'll see as it grows up. And the fat head dandrels are uh, loving life because I've been stepping up on feeding. Uh, one reason is that there's no detectable nitrates in the system using the Red Sea Pro kits, which is really sensitive. So I'm trying to up it a little bit. And I understand that uh, upping nitrate with uh, food is not the best way because I also introduce a uh, phosphate into the system. Uh, thank you, uh, all the friends that I talked to uh, in chat that talked about this, but at least it helps a little bit. So I tried to step up feeding a little bit just to see how it goes. And of course, uh, we got Bob right here, everybody's favorite Aptasia, if there's such a thing. Um, I've been watching Bob. I've been watching Bob. And when he gets a little out of control, I'll, I'll take him out. But so far, Bob popped off a little couple babies and they always disappear after a couple days. And I think it's either the foul fish picking them off or something else is picking it off. But I do see this one right here. Oh, by the way, look at the Christmas tree worm rock. They're all really healthy. And I really attribute this to dosing reef nutrition products, the oyster feast and our I think those are stuff that these Christmas tree rocks or the Christmas tree worms can actually eat. Oh, look at them. Beautiful. But uh, yeah, there's Aptasia here too. Now this one I'm gonna deal with because it's a little bit too close to uh, this rock and it's obviously bothering the zoas already. Dude, look at all the fish. They're just following me. When, wherever I am, they're just following me waiting for food, man. This is not natural looking at all. Another thing is that, uh, look at the Ganipora. The Ganipora has really grown, especially since I've moved it out front and center. Really like the spot. It's right under the light, right under the flow. And you see all the baby polyps popping up between the uh, adult polyps. Really nice. And there's a core that I have not really talked about. I think the common name is called like potato chip coral and something like that. I actually picked it up from one of the frag swap uh, from Travis, Fish Packs. It was really cheap because it's not a colorful coral, it's tan. But it's, uh, if you look from this side, right, it actually starting to develop like a green coloring. Uh, and I think some coral do that, especially soft coral, that's not soft coral, but especially soft coral, if they get under like intense light, they'll start developing color. But I really like the form. I think like once it grows out, it really looks nice. Like make, make it more visually interesting. Not so much color, but at least in texture and form. And that's that's a whole reason why I got it. And of course, it's like getting getting something from Travis, which is great. Speaking of that, I actually got a piece from Fish of Hacks. This is like from last year, year and a half ago. That pink Monty, Monty Pora. It has not been really happy for a while, but then now it's uh, fully recovered. It was being stung by something and it's starting to take over the frack rack, which I'm really happy about. Same thing with this, uh, this SPS right here. Uh, I've just not been touching them, they've just been growing. And I forgot, I totally forgot I got a bounce mushroom of some sort in the back. Pretty cool. And also the uh, Space Invader has fully recovered from the one-two punch, this tank experience. And it's uh, starting to grow again, which I'm really happy about. And look at that, we got a little piece of SPS right there as well. And also look at this, Monty Cap on the overflow finally taking off. And they're actually curling upwards now, so things are about to get interesting. I love Monty Caps and I would like to get a couple different colors on there as well. And oh, this piece. This is the Force Fire 
Mommy Cat Digitata. That has been hurting for a long, long time. Polyp is still shrinking. I feel like it may be, the light may be too bright for it something. I've already moved it into the shade. But uh, the part that got shaded the most started coloring up. You see the green right there? So I feel like maybe it's still too bright where it is right now. I may try to move it to somewhere uh, with more shade, but it's already slowly recovering. It has been looking really sad for a long time. I just haven't really addressed it. And the finger letter has started splitting off branches, so that is good. Now I'm trying to keep it a certain height so that it doesn't it doesn't compete with the, that big piece of structure. So I think this height is good. When it start getting a little bit taller, I'm gonna start fragging back. I need to do a better job at fragging core to keep them in check. But yeah, but yeah, I mean overall the tank is stable. Uh, I do want to start find some way to introduce some kind of nitrate. Uh, more like an ex experiment. A lot of people say that, hey, don't don't mess with something that's uh, that's working, right? But I feel like if there's something that I could do to make coral grow faster, more colorful, etc., uh, well, let's let's try it a little bit. Um, I'll go, <laughs> I'll proceed with caution, and we'll we'll see how the corals react. I think right now the zoas, whatever the tank environment is right now, is re they're really liking the environment. They're spreading really quickly. Look at the fruit loop. They they are just exploding. The Rasta being choked out here by the Sunny Ds, but it's okay because we got some Rasta in the back as well. The Magician has really, uh, really started multiplying as well. So I think these kind of soft corals, oh, look at the Space Monster. It's actually splitting off onto the rock now. This is uh, faster than I was expecting. And the Candy Apple Red, or Candy Apple. So these uh, softies are doing really well, but I think the other stuff, like the LPS and stuff like that, even though they're growing, I feel like they maybe could be growing faster if I introduce some sort of a nitrate source. So that is one thing I'm kind of testing out and keeping an eye on. And oh, here's the rust I was talking about. Yeah, it's growing pretty fast. And here's where I'm torn at as well. Like, do I trim back the rastas, or just let it slowly kind of work its way out with the Christmas tree worms on this rock? But yeah, um, I think like I'm gonna try a little bit of nitrate dosing and see how it goes. And I actually have the stump remover from, I think it was like a year, year and a half ago. I bought it, never tried it. So I, I thought about dosing nitrate at one point, but never went through with it. So we may, we may give this a go, we'll see. All right guys, so this is a, uh, this turned out to be much longer than I was expecting. Uh, only wanted to do a quick update, but you know me, I rambled. No matter which